YouTube and hello Ninth Age community. This is Charles of Evershed Gaming and I don't have a Ninth Age battle for it, but I am going to talk about the Infernal, Infernal Dwarf update for their lab beta. Now this is the third update that we've had for Infernal Dwarves. It's coming out today on November 12th and I'm just going to want to go through it. Um, I know, you know, one of the things we did on this channel is we looked at the lab when it first came out back in May and it's had a couple substantial tweaks along its course. I'm going to try and not make this video too long. Um, I just really want to go over the major changes, uh, kind of talk about them, give them some thoughts and opinions about them, and then maybe look at the points at the end of the book and kind of pick out who the winners and the losers are. So this is my copy that I got for translation and CET purposes. Uh, that's community engagement. Uh, you know, I've had this for a couple weeks and I've pondered over it. Uh, the first thing that was a notable change was Incendiary lost some D3 hits that activated, which is minor. The ammunitions changed quite significantly. You got some new ones with the Kadeem Blessed, or I guess that's actually a total retweak of that one to provide plus one strength, plus one AP, and flaming attacks. No longer is the cluster and munitions a thing. And the Aethera Cloud changed pretty significantly to now target channel instead of making you lose one Veil token, which I think is more significant. And it has that old rule that I believe the Titan Mortar used to have maybe back in like eight or even older, where it affected uh, like artillery or right now it's just a minus one hit in the entire shooting phase. So interesting change. I'll kind of be curious to see if more people uh, would be interested in taking something like the Aether Cloud. I don't really, I, I never really, I feel like I did not get a lot of uh, uh, games in against artillery pieces, uh, mostly just the gunnery games. The uh, oil skins got a little bit better in that now, if you have three ranks or more, you can actually do two incendiary markers. So uh, this would make, this makes me curious if like 20 uh, vassal levies with bows will be a little bit more popular. And there's a new shooting attribute called Beneb's Judgment, which is the attacks become divine attacks. They have their AP set to zero, and then armor save rolls of one, two, to three are always considered failed when saving wounds caused by attacks with an edge. So this one's interesting just in that um, I'd be kind of curious to see what people put this on. It's I know in some cases it's relatively cheap. It's I mean to me on the like the face value it sounds pretty good in that it's got like divine attacks. Uh, I mean in some cases too where if you were thinking about the previous rocket battery having strength six AP three, um, you know shooting at like uh, like a steam tank, the one you know your one armor saves of one two three are always are going to be a failure then too. So I'm very curious to see. It's honestly like a, a good demon killer for sure with divine attacks, but. I'd be kind of curious to see if that makes an appearance. The other, I would say, probably like most significant tweak in this update is the blunderbusses, which uh, I was sort of like going through a thread that was posted back in August about the blunderbusses. Very interesting. Um, so now they're, I, I mean, I, I don't know, significantly worse maybe, but um, interesting at the very least. The range 12, shots 1, strength 5, AP 3, accurate, no longer quick to fire. So after you roll the hit, half your shots become set to strength 3, AP 0. So higher strength, higher AP, but um, I guess maybe overall less impact when some of your shots are going to be strength 3, AP 0. To me, it seems like it's going to be more important than ever to use the incendiary to stack up incendiaries and have flaming shots with either flaming sword or with flaming banners because... You know, having real to wound with your strength 3 AP 0 shots would be good. Uh, and then your strength 5 AP 3 shots against things that are resilience 4 or resilience 5 then are going to really be effective. But overall, it's quite interesting. Also, they did increase the army wide ability or uh, ability to have more models with flintlocks and blunderbusses, which to me is a signal of their decrease in their, their strength. Because the flintlocks 
Flintlock axe also went down to range, as you can see, it went down to only 16 inches. And then for our, your alti our artillery pieces, the biggest change was um, cutting the strength and AP across the board on everything, which uh, makes sense with the, the, what they did with the gunnery team. Was before, if you took a gunnery team, like you would automatically reduce your strength and AP. So it's interesting. I mean, they also added the kind of previous ability of the Aether Cloud on the Napa Thrower, now that it has a, a minus one discipline modifier if you do, you know, 25% or more health loss. If, you know, if a unit takes a panic test, they're taking a minus one discipline. So that's that's nice. I'll be kind of, I'll be really curious to see if artillery is taken for ID. I don't know. Uh, on the whole, I really, again, I did not feel like I got to experience a ton of it. And when I did experience it, it didn't do so well in the games I played, either just bad rolls or not wounding or or not getting through armor or whatever and if anything that's become a lot harder now with uh, the reduced strength and AP. Uh, the Curse of Nebzakesh got a little bit better I would say in that uh, it kind of has the additional minus one for incendiary markers and I want to say it now it adds an incendiary marker which is quite good. Uh, it had an increased cast cost uh, that went up. Uh, not a lot changed for the special items in this tweak, honestly. The biggest change was probably the Mask of Ages is more in line with the Infernal, uh, the Immortals now, which we'll kind of go over that. And they changed the, they used to have a banner called the Banner of like Zalaman Takesh or Takash. Now it's the Blessed Icon of Zalaman Takash, which is quite good. It's armor penetration and special attacks against models in a bearer's unit is set to zero for the melee phase. Uh, that's primarily going to be really good for the Immortals, but it's also not too bad on the Turok units. They can take those, because the Spanner cannot be taken by core units. And, yeah, I mean, they updated the language on the Golden Idol, uh, so not too much of change there. Um, the Overlord got a new special rule called Arrogance, which is quite interesting. It, uh... Let's him kind of always reroll to hit against a general, enemy general, and then enemy units gain frenzy against the model's unit. That's probably the more interesting part of it. Uh, the Prophet had a small tweak uh, or kind of clarification for the Prophet Lugar, and he got a new mount option, the Seat of Authority, which is I, I think is actually pretty cool. I actually really like that mount option, and it's only available it was only available currently on the Vizier, but now a Prophet of Ashra can take it too, which is cool. I think it'd be, one, I think it's a uh, interesting uh, modeling or a modeling opportunity. Uh, and the one thing you will see on all the dwarf units is they all lost March and Shoot. Uh, across the, every dwarf unit has lost March and Shoot, which is another huge change to the shooting, which we'll kind of get to a little later. Uh, the Lama Sioux Scholar moved to the character section and actually I think became very good. Uh, it was kind of okay before. I think it's better now. It has the option to take a single artifact with no limit, which is awesome. Um, one of the things I was looking at is you can take the, the brass bowl thing uh, that gives it another wound and it gives it a toxic breath weapon. That is very spicy to me. But you could even take the Book of Arcane Mastery. You could take the Magical Heirloom. Uh, cause it, yeah, it has Infernal Brain, so you'd be fine. Yeah, cause even Curse of Nebuchadnezzar is one of its spell options. Uh, so that's pretty spicy. Also, it, to me, it looks like it has lost, or, 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 or lost the ruling, but also gained the ability to now cast the different versions of spells, where before you were limited only casting the base version of spells, so it made a spell like Flaming Swords not as good, it made a spell like Word of Iron not as good, now that restriction is gone. Now the kind of the, the riddle of Lamasu choice that your opponent has to make is whether or not the Lamasu gains channel one or knows an additional spell, which I feel most opponents are always going to lean towards giving you an extra channel instead of giving you an extra spell. An extra spell seems way better than the channel. I almost wonder if channel two would tip that um, into making somebody choose the extra spell. But yeah, I think that seems like a no-brainer to pick the extra channel. 
these are just a couple updates here and there. I think the next big thing you have to look at is the Infernal Warriors um, had a decent change. So they went up from 12 to 20 in the minimum size. And I think what's significant about that is maybe like a less of an MSU option for Infernal Dwarves. Um, their blunderbusses got cheaper, but again, also maybe not as effective. They're a little bit better to hit now. They used to be a four up, now they're a three up. So, I mean, most of the time, if you move with them, you'll be hitting on fours because they're not quick to fire. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, some minor point tweaks here and there. The slaves got a quite a significant change, I would say. So since March and Shoot was taken off all of the dwarves, the shackled slaves now have an ability to unlock it for a single dwarf unit. So basically, before the shackled slaves had to take a discipline test, and if they passed it. Uh, they could give another, they could give a single unit that's got Infernal Brand the ability to have like the Battle Focus shooting or, or, or maybe and the uh, Dangerous Terrain test could go on the Slave unit. Now, before the battle, you just choose an infantry unit with Infernal Brand in your army list. They, they get Commanding Presence to help the Slaves stay on the battlefield. And then in addition, when... Slaves are not in combat or fleeing. The chosen unit, the chosen Infernal Brand unit, this dwarf unit, gains March and Shoot, and it gains uh, Flaming Attacks the second round of close combat, and it also gets the ability to transfer the Dangerous Terrain tests onto the Shackle Slaves. So, to me, I mean, Slaves are just a big upgrade now, but uh, you might see them a bit more considering, you know, considering they now unlock the March and Shoot option. Point changes. Immortals had a significant change, uh, mostly in just that their, their special rule changed. Previously, it was uh, Whispers of Mask was against Strength 5 or higher. Um, you had minus one to wound against the Immortals. Now, you have this option, so at, uh, step two around combat sequence, which is when models choose their weapons. Uh, so it's kind of almost like choosing your weapon this round, too. Is you can either choose to have an Aegis plus one against melee attacks. And lose battle focus. So you can either have battle focus or you can have a six plus Aegis or, I mean, a plus one to your Aegis. So if you had something like um, a five plus Aegis cast on them from Occultism, now it's a four up Aegis. So that's pretty good. And this stacks with the mask uh, or the, yeah, the mask of Aegis that comes out of your special selection. So this could be really good for a character too. Uh, and also they gained Terror, which is interesting. <laughs> I like the idea of Immortals having Terror. And as you can see, they added Battle Focus to go along with Wister's Mask. And then Disciples of Lugar. This is a quite a drastic change, too, I feel like. So they lost Fame Flight. They gained a new rule called Opposition Research. Their defense bumped up. Their strength and AP dropped. Their strength dropped by 1. Their AP dropped by 2. And they gained Lethal Strike. The litigator is now 10 points per model, and the opposition research is quite interesting. So immediately before step one of the deployment phase, which is determining who goes first, so you pick table sides, the owner may choose, uh, if you have at least one unit in your army, one unit or more with this opposition research rule, you may choose a non-character unit on the opponent's army list that, uh, that can be deployed during the deployment phase. This unit loses scouting vanguard if it had it, and the opponent must immediately deploy this unit. This is done outside the normal deployment procedure and is ignored when determining the first deployed unit and then a number of deployed units. So, wow, what an advantage uh, if you get the eye, if you have the option to choose to go first with the Infernal Dwarves, if you can put something in your opponent's list down that is either scary or something you want to shoot at or something you want to magic off the board. Um, very powerful ability. Although now it's attached to Disciples of Lugar, who I'm, I'm not, I'm sort of, I'd be curious to see people's opinions on this. I'm, I'm sort of split because they also gain distracting, which is quite nice. And you lose distracting when you activate the Pack of Fire. So I'd be kind of curious to see if the Disciples are going to be used with paired weapons and just sort of 
sort of maybe, again, like the incendiary stacking or using alchemy to get the flaming off to allow them to re-roll the hit or re-roll the wound, because if you're re-rolling wound and you have lethal strike, that's quite good. You know, that's what I like about my Inquisitor in the Empire of Sonstall with his Blessed Inscriptions paired weapons. He's got, he's got re-roll the wound and he's got lethal strike. It's beautiful. It's a great combo. Um, but, yeah, Strength 3 is pretty weak, so I don't know if you're going to be seeing more great weapons or if you're just... I can going be seeing as many Disciples of Lugard. They seem to be pretty popular with their Feign Flight. The Litigator now has the Feign Flight rule, uh, but it's also 10 points per model, which seems expensive. You know, like, if you get 15 Disciples of Lugard and you upgrade them to Litigers, you know, that unit is another 150 points. That's 485 points for, like, 15 Skirmishing Dwarves, which are pretty fast and you know, are, are, you know, I'd say resilient to probably shooting with hard target and, you know, the main flyability is interesting, but it just seems pretty expensive, you know, considering it's only like 15 dwarves, um, who still don't have an army save, they have an age of save, of course, but that's, that's definitely tough. So I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm a bit split on the Disciples of Lugar. Another interesting thing I noticed about the Disciples of Lugar is the Kadeem Chariot crew did not change, but the character mount crew did change. I'm not sure if that's just a miss or uh, an intended thing. The Acolytes on the Kadeem Chariot still have Strength 4 AP 2 and Special, but the character mount ones are Strength 3 AP 0 with Lethal Strike. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's intended or just a miss thing or maybe going to be updated uh, when the book comes out um, today. I'm recording this the day before, but, you know, you're going you're to have it on Thursday. Uh, yeah, uh, just more point changes. The gunnery team, uh, cumbersome rule changed to just talk about it having to hold as a voluntary reaction. Previously, that rule was hold as a voluntary charge reaction and a nice one strength in AP. They don't need to do that now that they uh, changed all of the, uh, you know, strength in AP and all the weapons. And then I guess the only other minor tweak probably is the Infernal Lash on the Citizen Giant. Maybe try to make it a little bit more uh, competitive against the Tower Shield, as the Tower Shield went up a little bit. And the Infernal Lash now gives you plus two agility, uh, which is nice. And also, you know, again, you know, units are probably going to be... I feel like there's a push in this sort of beta release to use the Incendiary <laughs> as much as possible and use flaming attacks, I mean, that, that you know, that is the Infernal Dwarf, of, you know, sort of niche, right, is flaming attacks and incendiary and getting real to wound and being able to use that combo. So maybe this is an incentive to want to take a Citizen Giant. So looking at the point tweaks, um, I think it's safe to say there are some significant winners and some significant losers. Uh, I sort of, when I was going through all the point changes, I kind of, I grouped it into four different categories of meh, of nice, of oof, and of sort of needed necessary changes just because of design changes. So in the meh, I would put uh, the special items, nothing really uh, seemed to be too significant there. The gunnery team, I think they went down just a teensy bit in points. Um, which seems like maybe almost needed. And uh, the Vassal Chieftain got a little bit cheaper on the Vassal Cavalry. It's all pretty meh. What was nice to me was the profit tweaks all seemed to go down a bit uh, in a couple places. A couple things went up, like the Great Bull. Uh, the Great Bull seems like a, actually kind of a big loser, this one, even though I, I just I know one of my uh, regular Infernal Dwarf uh, opponents went to a tournament and he took a great bowl and he had a hard time with it. I think he lost it four to five games by turn two. So, I don't, I mean, that's that's just one person's experience. The Turok Commissioner got a little bit cheaper, which is nice. That's one of my favorite characters. I'd actually like to see more people play that. Uh, the Immortals overall seems like quite a nice change um, in terms of points and in, in terms of abilities. I think with that new banner, uh, I would 
hope to see some more Immortals. I haven't really gotten to fight against them yet, but they got cheaper overall with their their base costs, their additional model cost, and their great weapons went up a point, and their frontal weapon went up a point, but I don't really think that's going to be too much of a problem. The Disciples, uh, a Lugar seems like a, a big oof for me, um, just in terms of overall cost. You know, they lost Fame Flight, and it went on the Litigator, and it made the Litigator go up by five points, but they didn't lose any uh, additional model cost or any base cost, so... That one's a bit tough for me. I think uh, the Disciples may have gotten hit by the nerf bat on that one. Another nice thing, actually, is the Turok Anointed. Uh, minor point drops. The big, Well, that's the minor point drops on additional and infernal weapons, but gray weapons got cut over uh, over by 50%. I think you might actually see some gray weapon Turok starting to rock around. With Strength 7, AP 4, I that sounds really spicy to me. I don't even think you need to pay for a shield. I mean, you still have a 4 armor save. You're still Resilience 5. That could be, I think, interesting to see if people want to start taking those. Another overall oof for me is the Overlord. He got more expensive except for his Truk uh, ritual. And his Great Bull went up too. I I don't really think that was necessary. I think melee characters kind of always need a break where they can get it because sometimes they're an unnecessary expenditure in a lot of lists. And I would also say the artillery is another oof. Um, just a couple things got cheaper. The rocket battery got significantly or got cheaper, but then it also got more expensive when you make it strength six AP three again with the Kadeem plus. Yeah, I don't know. Part of me doesn't feel like it got cut enough in some places, considering how they're all a little bit uh, weaker, un un unless you give them their kind of previous strength values back. So I, I think that's going to be quite interesting. Uh, one of the, the, I felt like one of the needed ones was Incarnate's got a couple, a little bit of a point drop. They seem to be needing it. Uh, the Citizen Giant got more expensive, which I think is good. <laughs> I think their Giant's really good. It only went up by a little bit, but to me, again, that seemed necessary. And then uh, the Referral Legend kind of went up all over the board, too, except in a couple spots, and I think that also seems necessary. The engine seems quite good to me still. So uh, overall, I would say this definitely seems to be uh, a nerf uh, in a few places. Um small buffs to some units that weren't being seen as much maybe, but uh, big change in, uh, and weakening of the shooting, uh, strengthening of maybe a couple special units, and uh, yeah, big change to the Disciples of Lugar. They got heavy, heavily reworked, as it says here, looking at the... Uh, change log so yeah i don't know. let me let me know what you guys think in the comments of the video you know you know if you're an infernal dwarf player you know thumbs up thumbs down if you're been playing against infernal dwarves um you know thumbs up or thumbs down let me know what you guys think so and that is uh the changes and uh we're gonna just kind of call it right here uh at the at the the video uh this has been a review of the Beta 3 coming out for Infernal Dwarves on November 12th, 2020. See you guys soon with another 9th Age Battle Report.